Made it to May 29th, and we're talking about several, several of the many U.S. Army forts in the area. Good morning, Melissa. There you are. Good morning. I'm back, and happy Memorial Day weekend to everyone. And you're having a better noonie? Yes, I am. My noonie is, is somewhat being nice to me, so I'm very happy. Fair enough. we yes. got all kinds of things going on here. This is the crowd that uh, basically st- we're streaming live on Facebook, El Paso History Radio Show. Apparently, the thumbs up is there on that one. Uh, Also, the page Remember in El Paso When, and this is where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. Yes, it is. And if you can't get us uh, on the Internet in that sense, you could also, well, you can also get us on the Internet, but, I mean, you can also listen to us at KTSM Radio here locally at uh, 690 AM. And then, again, if we're you're saying the Internet, you can go to KTSMRadio.com where you can click on the iHeartRadio link and you can take us anywhere you go, out in the backyard doing chores. A lot, a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. Oh, yeah. They, they I around. did it. <laughs> I, I love the famous one that we had, a guy sitting on a tractor up in Capitan, New Mexico, <laughs> with the air conditioner yeah. running and a radio on. Well, that in the tank, the tank out at uh, oh. Biggs Field. Remember that one oh, sometime back? was one back? of those. Yeah, we had some guys that were from Mississippi, oh. and they were listening to the show on the radio in the tank as they were doing maneuvers. Oh, boy. I thought, how cool. I can, they, so they can find us streaming on all those places you've decided, yes, right? Yes, we can. Okay, and the history moment today? Yes, we do. We have what's kind of an interesting story about the Apaches and the Villaistas during the Mexican Revolution. Lot, the Revolution doesn't quit. No, It no. keeps on giving. I mean, it there's wrapped so many up a lot of people. bizarre things going on. All right, we've got some interesting history of our own to talk about today with a young fellow by the name of John Hamilton. John, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, hey. Melissa. Hello, welcome, John. Welcome here, El Paso. dude. Welcome here, dude. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, I call you a military historian because kind of that, that's what you are. <laughs> I, just, I decided that would be a good thing to call you. But the thing is, there's so many things to talk about in the military, the, the history here. One of the biggies was all the forts. I mean, Fort Bliss is obvious. We have that. And we had it in five locations. But also, we figured, uh, what do you think, maybe like 30-some-odd forts around the area here, give or 30, give or take? Oh, at least that many. In Texas and New Mexico, oh, yes. And with Arizona, Fort Huachuca. Yes. And so the forts were everywhere. Today, we're going to take on like four of them, maybe five of them, and, and thoroughly discuss them. And so if we missed your fort, that's tough. I mean, we didn't do it on purpose. But John picked them out, and I said, hey, John, let's do the forts around here. So we've done that. But what, what was and when was the frontier, the frontier uh, fort system, what was it, and when was it around? Well, that's a good question. You know, way back in August of 1846, during the Mexican-American War, uh, General Stephen Watts Kearney came through from uh, Fort Leavenworth, went across to Santa Fe and then to California with the Donovan expedition breaking off and coming south to El Paso. Well, Kearney got to Las Vegas, New Mexico, in August of 1846, gathered all the fair citizens of the town together and said, folks, you're now under the protection of the United States of America. So where before you were preyed upon by Indians and by local Mexican bandits, 
Now we will protect you. So by saying that, and saying that elsewhere as well, he sort of committed the United States to providing protection to them once that part of the country became part of the good old U.S. of A. Was it a territory at that moment? Not at that moment. It okay. was Mexican territory ah. at that moment. And, and the, he was claiming it for him and, the and his of, buddies in Washington. That's right. And the <laughs> Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848 pretty much took this huge swath of territory between Texas and all the way out to California and made it part of the United States. Well, after the war, uh, of course, the United States had to scramble to show the flag out here. So that's a war with Mexico. They won this, and now they own all all this Texas stuff. And what's interesting is Army strength during the Mexican-American War was about 47,000 soldiers. And in less than a year after the war ended, that dropped to a little over 10,000. So you think about this. They had to put troops out here in this territory, and they only had 10,000 of them. And, and by, right, by comparison, if you look at the strength of Fort Bliss right now, it's about 35, 36,000 soldiers. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So, and that's Fort Bliss alone. Yeah. So, you know, they could put troops out here. They, they needed to show the flag. They needed to conduct scouts, uh, escort wagon and mail trains, improve roads, uh, and then occasionally concentrate to do really offensive operations. As an average, and I don't know if you could have had an average back then, but Muslim Menos, how many people do you think that there was that were at each fort? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine some more than others. Fort Bliss had its fluctuations. Fort Bliss, when it was established as the post opposite El Paso in 1849, when Jefferson Van Horn got here, uh, his strength was about 250 soldiers. Oh, that was a lot. Uh, and that's that's a big number of soldiers. Of course, the post didn't last that long. It was closed in 1851. And the troops were moved up to Fort Millard Fillmore at, outside of Mesilla. And why was that? Uh, the, the post was sitting in a place where there weren't many people here. Uh, most of the people were across the river in yeah. what was El Paso del Norte, uh, which is now Ciudad Juarez. So the, the people were up around Mesilla. And Mesilla was across the river at that time still in Mexico. We didn't get that piece of terrain that's right. until the Gads didn't purchase. Oh. So they moved the troops up there, and really that's where the trouble was. There were raids from, from the Indians. The Indians looked at us and said, wow, uh, there's lunch, uh, <laughs> there's transportation, uh, there's all kinds of things we can do. It's everything we need. Yeah. So th- there was never really any overt attack. They would just sneak in and steal all the livestock and run it off. And then come back when they needed to restock. So (laughs) ultimately, they moved the 3rd Infantry up into New Mexico. They put, uh, uh, they had a company of infantry at at Fort Fillmore. And what what year would that be, Fillmore? 1851. 51, okay. Is when they established this place. Uh, And it was god-awful. They did it hurriedly. Uh, The troops lived in tents uh, for quite a while. Uh, the families that were with them, the officers' families, officers' wives and kids. They came they with them? Li- oh, yes. Oh. They lived in tents. Um, that was re- that's right near the, ri- is, the river, right? It's right? This is on the river. Yeah. So you've got all the insects, all the issues. Uh, and uh, they got a company of dragoons. Uh, the first dragoons put a, uh, the army put the first a company of the first dragoons in there. So now you have a combined arms p- uh, post. Uh, these are troops that are mounted. They can chase after the Indians. Yeah. Of course, the infantry, not so much, um, uh, particularly if the Indians are, you know, the infantry um, was not mounted. Uh, they could march uh, only, you know, a certain amount of time during the day. And this is pretty rough living. And they were at the tail end of the supply train. Oh, Most of the supplies were coming now from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, Across through uh, 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 New Mexico and and down the so Horn what was Del left Arto. what was left got maybe near the that's right yes yeah. yeah. so everybody up the, up the tape took took what they needed what and uh, and you may you and in fact there were you would get a ration of candles and soap 
you were lucky to get uh, one candle and one bar of soap that was supposed to last a month. For the whole camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for a while it's per person, but, oh, but was, still, yeah. uh, it's not much. Now, Fort Fillmore is currently in uh, ruins and uh, part of a pecan grove. There's hardly anything there. There is the evidence of the floor of one of the buildings. So we got some pictures of that it's stuff. there. Let's see what we got here. Uh, there are some flags. There's a flagpole. There's some... Uh, some uh, a few little things there. They've done excavations, uh, but that's well in the past. So there isn't much there. And yes, it's in a pecan grove. It's on private property. We've oh, got, so it's uh, on private uh, property. Yes. Now, this looks like just some uh, some yes bricks sitting on the ground. Yes, that's that's really, really what it, what it looks like today. Or you know, uh, and this was taken some years ago. I I happened to meet, uh, and of course, there's Fort Fillmore. Very picturesque, beautiful landscape. Yeah, that's a great shot, um, good, good drawing. I mean, uh, and ultimately what they had there was a, a group of adobe buildings, um, uh, corrals, that sort of thing, a parade ground. Well, say they um, didn't really have, like, defensive perimeters on this thing. No, they didn't. It's, uh, you remember the old movies where, you know, John Wayne in... Uh, Up on the wall. In, uh, yeah, John Wayne in, in uh, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon where you have the stockade. I mean, yeah. They really didn't have stockades. There wasn't enough wood to build I was going to say, where are you going to get the trees? Yeah. And, and really, no self-respecting Indian tribe or group is going to try to attack a, a fort with a bunch of soldiers. Uh, what you want to do is you want to sneak in at night and, you know, <laughs> Take and yeah, get their attention over here. And, 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 go and so the we back. had issues like that with all of the posts in this area. So Fillmore is, is there. It's, it's, uh, it's there in 1851. And then in 1853, Colonel Joseph K. Mansfield, who is the inspector general of the Army, very distinguished officer, Mexican-American War veteran, he comes through. He inspected all. All the posts in this area, 1853 to 1854, and of course the locals down at uh, the old post at El Paso say, "Hey, we, you guys, need to put some troops down here too." So in 1853, they reestablish Fort Bliss and name it for Fort Bliss, William Wallace Smith Bliss. It was no longer the <laughs> fort opposite El Paso. That's right. Uh, well, and we're still talking downtown in the plaza. R- it, roughly? It's now it's now out on uh, around McGoffin and Willow okay. Street. It went out there. McGoffinsville. Got it. McGoffinsville, yes. Yeah. Because James Wiley like, McGoffin, he says, "Hey, I've got plenty of land. I've got a, I've got it's posters already. All you have to do is pay me." <laughs> Gee, you know? that sounds familiar. And uh, now you were saying they also got mo- yellow fever here. We had yellow fever, which I, I blows we me had, away. I always think of yellow fever being. S- East the, of El Paso. The real problem here was dysentery. It oh, was, yeah, that's it always was been a... stuff from the river, yeah. and that's where the water came from. Uh, they didn't have wells, uh, so they were taking water out of the river, and uh, you'd get dysentery. Uh, when they were at Fort Fillmore, one of the things they did do was buy pears and grapes and peaches and so forth from the locals to ward off something called scurvy. Scurvy. Yeah. Uh, which is a scourge mm-hmm. at some post. They knew how to get rid of it or how to keep from getting it. They just didn't know quite what caused it. It's a vitamin. Vitamin C lack. Yes, yeah. deficiency. What do you do all day when you're at a fort in Fillmore and you're an Army guy and there's no real conflict going on, Indians occasionally nipping at your, your supplies? Guard duty. Walking around with a gun. Guard duty. You did drills in the morning. You would had fatigue details. A lot of what the troops did was work on the buildings, keep them up, try to maintain them. These were adobe buildings. They didn't have uh, doors or windows. Um, they were heated by fireplaces in the wintertime and cooled by the wind in the summertime. The wind. Uh, and ah, yes. so, so you did that. Occasionally you would do scouts. You'd go up and look for Indians. Uh, you'd go out into the hinterlands and look around. In 1857, there was a big expedition that was mounted. Fort Fillmore provided some troops for it that went up into the Gila and uh, found some of the uh, Indians, and they did an attack there. And it also in 1857, the camel train came through. Oh, God, oh, yes. yes. That's an interesting story. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. nuts. That's a story in itself. Real camels. But they were real live, no kidding camels, and they worked. They actually did what the Secretary of War, a fellow by the name of Jefferson Davis, thought they would do, Uh, but they were a little bit hard to maintain. Um, 
they I, I remember reading they, they tended to spook the mules. Yeah, I think they spooked everything. And Cattle, and horses, people. horses. Everybody. Uh, I, I, I think they would have been a, a very good use here in the desert. Uh, I oh, think if you'd had yes. better training, because they only had one or two people that came, I believe, yes. uh, from from Arabia or where, where was that? Yes, they, they brought uh, High Jolly from High uh, Jolly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> High yeah. Jolly. Uh, yeah, he ended up in, in San Diego, uh, I think. Didn't yeah, he? I think he did. Yeah, well, I after, one, after they abandoned the whole idea. One, yeah. one question would be, what do they taste like? Uh, it's I it. can't say. I mean, I, if the, if the Indians like them, the Indians would kill them and eat them. Well, yeah, no, they, you can have camel meat in the Middle East today. You can buy it. You can eat it. Uh, I remember we dealt with, we had camels in and around our posts in, when I was stationed with the peacekeeping force in Sinai in For 1983. Real? Oh, yeah. my. Oh, yes. This guy talking here. Uh, yes. guy talking is John Sinai? Hamilton, our yes. military uh, historian. I was six months in Sinai. And he was six months in Sinai, but he's right here, oh, right now. I thought it's Saigon. I was like, no. Saigon. And we're going to take a break any second now. Oh, we Can shall. Can you imagine doing that? You and got people too looking. Too interesting. Too interesting. Uh, it is. People looking at you on Facebook already, right? Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, yeah. Her- Herabit's on there. Herabit's there. You know, he uh, you had you put up that thing where you can vote for the best radio. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> uh, he said he couldn't vote. Why couldn't he vote? Because he's, his. I don't, I'm not quite sure on that, but yeah, I think I think you have to. I'm trying to remember if you have to register your name and address. So I think they only want you know oh. people. Hmm. Well, it's like, hey, you know, if you're seeing us outside of the we'll, area, we'll register and vote for him. Yeah. So we had a lot of people that responded. So we'll see. I, I I've done know. this a couple of times. We've never. Well, worked, yeah, this this radio show has been. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. You've been here a decade and change. <laughs> and almost <laughs> almost only be a decade this year. Yeah. That, that you've been here. So, I mean, you know, we've been around a bit, so vote for whatever you want to do. I don't care. Anyway, take Make it us a, feel good. Take it a break. You look at the comments there on Facebook. You'll also take a phone call. Let's put the number out one time and see what happens. We don't we'll need to bother them with that. It's 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. You did it. Monterey Asset Management. In our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, 
you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. You can take a look at the uh, History Radio Show, El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, or you can. we'll take a, an email from you. I'm right now looking at uh, EP History 690. And that's on Gmail, so take a look at that if you want to send us something on that. Um, also, we're going to start doing something different here this summer. We're actually going to open up uh, funding for the radio show for as a nonprofit, just like we did television, Melissa. Remember mm-hmm. we did that for ABC7? We're going to do that for the radio show as well. So if you think what we're doing is interesting and you have too much money, give me <laughs> yeah. give me an email on that thing. We'll talk Adopt about me. it. Adopt me. APHistory690, <laughs> gmail.com. But a lot of things going on. I'll let you know about that's just one of them. We also have a uh, YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is El Paso History TV on YouTube. We've got our El Paso Gold DVDs sitting there, a whole bunch of them, a dozen of them. And uh, in addition, there's a second playlist of the uh, El Paso History TV pieces we did on ABC7. So take a look at that, find out some interesting history. You can learn quite a bit of El Paso history just by looking at those things. So it goes. What do you got? Okay, well, out at Concordia Cemetery, starting at 11 a.m. this morning, uh, they will be honoring the forgotten heroes of all wars. Monday, right? Oh, excuse me. No, it's Monday. You're right. Thank you. I went right past that one. On Monday, May 31st, again, it's 11 a.m., and it's going to be at the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Monument area in in Concordia's Meditation Garden. Uh, And there's parking on the street or inside the cemetery at the Masonic area and at Yandel Entrance. The uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Soldier Memorial Gate, I, uh, I've been gone two weeks. Buffalo Soldier Memorial Gate on Stevens and Yandel, you can be, enter that way also. And donations are accepted for the Veterans Headstone Replacement Project we've got going on there. Shade chairs and water will be available. And it's sponsored by Concordia Heritage Association and the 82nd Airborne Veterans Group. For more information, go to the, uh, the Facebook page for Concordia Cemetery or call Patricia Kidney at 915 2 Four one six two eight five, but it's a very wonderful ceremony. And there hasn't been much going on like that publicly, and now here you come. Yeah, one year now everything's like boom, it's all there. It's all going to and the uh, John Wesley Harden Secret Society is going to happen At in this August. Point, yeah, it's it's going strong. So things are happening there out there. John Hamilton, sitting here being our historian of military things. Fort Fillmore. Did we get through Fort Fillmore? I, I mean, basically the idea is if you want to go, go see Fort Fillmore, you can't do it. Pretty much. Um, (laughs) I I wouldn't try it. People get rather um, concerned when you show up on their pecan farms. I did that. think that you're after their pecan. I I came in the back door trying to find the place, and and I'm I'm driving by, and people sitting outside there doing a cookout looking at me like, what are you doing driving in my yard? (laughs) Sorry. Really? I'm not supposed to be here, but anyway. Well, Fort Fillmore's real... History is uh, with the Civil War, with uh, the onset of the Civil War and uh, uh, the essential surrendering of Texas to the Confederacy by General David Twiggs. Well, it's on a Camino Real, so they got the traffic. The traffic all went by them all the time. Yes, and and this area, this stretch of land, was coveted by the Confederacy because the the dream was you would establish this uh, railroad that would go across. Texas, across the southern part of the United States to California, to the gold fields. And, of course, there were the gold fields in Colorado as well. So after the uh, state of Texas seceded, uh, pretty quickly, Lieutenant Colonel John Baylor showed up in El Paso with about 300 mounted Confederate troops 
and took uh, the old Fort Bliss for the Confederacy. And Fort Bliss by then was abandoned. All the troops were ordered, uh, all the Union troops were ordered to move to the, to, the, uh, to the coast of Texas and take ship to go to New York. They got as far as about San Antonio and Colonel Earl, uh, General Earl, Earl Van Dorn showed up and took them all prisoner and interned them all. Uh, as and, and prisoners the, of war. And the Bailey you mentioned, is that the guy with the university in later years? No, no, this is a different Bailey. Ah. John Baylor was a firebrand. He was a Texas patriot. He was an Indian fighter. He was ruthless. Uh, he was uh, rip-roaring. When you see a picture of him these days, you, you look at him, the stern look in his agate eyes, and you know this guy means business. <laughs> he spits uh, bullets. So uh, as soon as he got to Fort Bliss... There was no one there. He took command of the post and then immediately moved on uh, the troops that were known to be at Fort Fillmore. And there were about 700 troops there by then. There were ab- about eight companies of the 7th Infantry and three companies of the Regiment of Mounted Riflemen. But in the 1860s, where was Fort Bliss? Fort Bliss in the 1860s was still at McGoffinsville. McGoffinsville. Okay. Yes, that's where it was. So that's the way he took that over. And that had no, yes. that had no uh, walls or... No, barricades. No, no. no. James Wiley McGoffin owned the train, and James Wiley McGoffin was a Confederate Southern sympathizer. Oh, that's right. Uh, don't think he had slaves. Uh, Simeon Hart did. Yeah. But uh, uh, they were all Confederate commissioners, and that was to their detriment later on. But uh, they turned over the post uh, to uh, Baylor and his soldiers. Baylor attempted. He he wanted to take Fort Fillmore. So he moved on Mazia and occupied Mazia and ran up the Confederate flag. Now you got from Confederate troops in a Union territory. Uh oh. So you've got Major Isaac Lind, who is commanding the troops at Fort Fillmore, makes a sort of a feeble attempt to attack Mazia, but the Confederates were too well dug in. So Lind decides that he's going to withdraw to Fort Stanton, which we will talk about later. Aha. Uh-huh. But he gets as far as San Augustine Springs, which they think, historians think, that was probably about where the Cox Ranch is today. And Over, uh, over the mountain on the, yes. uh, on the east side. And this is July of oh. 1861. Hey, you're talking hot. So it's hot. It's uncomfortable. The troops are weary. There's some, there are a couple of stories that some of the troops raided the settlers and filled up their canteens with, with <laughs> rot gut whiskey rather oh. than water. Lovely. So uh, Lind was overtaken. By 300 Confederates, Lind had around 600, 700 troops, and Lind surrenders without a fight. The troops are all moved back to Fort Fillmore. They're all paroled, which they could do. They, they, you would parole soldiers. You didn't have it. You know, How are you going to keep prisoners? They, they any, didn't uh, have any way to keep so you, you took their weapons and said, now I don't have to feed you because you're on your yes. own. And, and, we and that's your problem. And we really don't know what happened to those weapons because they, they had dozens of them. But uh, oh, so that's yeah. that's the history of the area for, for Civil yeah. War. OK, taking a break here. Uh, John Hamilton is the man talking about the history of the military here. Melissa Sargent is sitting here doing something important. Oh, playing with Facebook. How's it going? It's going good. Let's see. Oh, Harry Kirk says hello. He's uh, on the east side, it says. Hebert's there. Daniel guy, guy Lehman from Tucson. from Tucson. Yeah, yeah. We got him checking in. Um, Margie from Northeast. That's Salem, so far North away Carolina. The mountain. Pardon? Salem, North Carolina. That, oh, yeah, that's Hebert. Uh, Linda, Linda, Linda Gog, and I think she's working today. She's a police officer. What else you got, Andrew? Oh, yeah. yeah Jamie, Jamie's I on there. I miss Jamie. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, people everywhere. All right. Yeah. And that, that voice in the uh, in the hallway, there, that's Andrew J. Polk. Yes. Thank you kindly for running the machines there today and getting us on the air and Facebook and everything. And he is Monday through Friday, the talk show host of Talk El Paso. So that's, right. that's 4 to 5 p.m. every Good show. every weekday. Taking a break here, and he's got a bell. Look out. Ah. Taking a break here, Andrew, hit the button. Back in a moment. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show. We'd be going to celebrate the mountains and doing that a whole lot. Jim Tolbert keeps doing that. A major event coming up later today, Saturday, May 29th. There'll be a late afternoon into the nighttime, a trip to Aden Crater. You want to go get in a crater tonight? With Aiden, yes. You can give old Jimbo a call, and he is at 525-7364, 525-7364, Jim Tolbert, and ask for Diego. Get a good seat. Diego. Your turn. Okay. I just want to bring out there that uh, we don't. We always want to mention our sponsors. They're so great to support us. Uh, Pepe's Restaurant in Kenya, too, is one of our top ones. And they're open today for in-house dining, and you can go, and they also have catering going on. So they're located at 6761 Donovan Drive. And it is home of the one and only Margarita. For more information, call Pepe's at 877-2152. Now call 588-1850 for Patrick Tuttle. and He's with Legacy Real Estate Services. Patrick is an excellent top sales realtor and has a nice inventory of homes for sale and to rent. Again, his number is 588-1850. And of course, we must welcome our newest sponsor, State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson. He's like a good neighbor, but with a better phone number. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can't forget this one. 915-581-0000. Zero. And if you're looking for a uh, rental or a company that, to manage your rentals, then you need to talk to one of the team members from our friends at Monterey Asset Management. Visit their website at m1ep.com. And you can give, also give them a call at 915-592-4549. And then... <clears throat> 
One person. He'll manage your whole apartment building for you. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. It's really good for somebody needs to manage your building or your rental properties. He covers a whole bank. If you go to his website, you'll you'll learn all about that. Uh, and now happening at Mission Del Rey Southwest, their annual spring walk-in sale is still underway with 20% off everything store-wide. Just mention the El Paso History Radio Show at checkout. And Mission Del Rey has a lot of great gifts for Father's Day, so keep them in mind when you're looking to shop for Dad. The old El Paso picture town is looking great and is already a big hit. Florida ceiling mural, Franklin Mountains, the Lone Star, the Shady Lady bar stools that make everyone smile. Uh, depends on who's sitting there. Uh, visit Mission Del Rey at 1421 North Lee Trevino Drive, Suite A7, or call them at 440-2140. John Hamilton, you've seen those bar stools, right? Well, when you sit down on it and from the back, it looks like the, 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 the stool is actually the pants of a woman. Yeah, they took a tractor seat and built up around it, so it looks like a woman's cheeks, you know, with their little how bloomers. No, how novel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you sit in that, you turn into that. Yeah, and you look like you're three feet wide. Well, he's got some of those. If you need one of those, two of those, 20 of those, he's, yeah, he's got them. Yeah. <laughs> John Hamilton, talking actually military history in El Paso is always interesting. The, the fort system, I mean, there were forts everywhere. You got Fort Leavenworth, actually, and that's way back in the day. Oh, way. You know. Old, old post. Yeah, and so, post. but that's Still not there. We're, we're talking about the frontier. And the frontier would have been anything Washington couldn't pronounce or couldn't see. Out there on the end of nowhere is the frontier. Kind it of. Was, it was occupied uh, pretty much by the Indians. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which was the problem. And so the white man wanted to go through there, and so he brought some soldiers to make sure well, he could get yes, through there. Yes, absolutely. And when they discovered gold at Sutter's Fort in 1848, then— uh, Get out became, of my way. This became the one of the routes to get to uh, the promised land where the gold was. And it, this was an all-weather route, even though you had to walk a lot of it. Yeah, it was pretty rough going. Oh, uh, God. Yes. Can you imagine trying to get through El Paso on uh, foot or a wagon? I mean, I've been out there at the other end of uh, behind Waco tanks and where the old wagon trails used to go up into those hills. Bernie and I went out there one day with a the camera. They were had, actually had a wagon train going through there, so we shot it. And uh, my, uh, what? Yes, wow. Oh, and it was nuts. And that was that was a reenactment. And you had a whole bunch of kids, uh, middle school kids, that they got put on the wagons, and they, they actually walked a lot of that. Yes, so they did. We get to hear about all well, that stuff. the the uh, third infantry that came from Camp Soledo at San Antonio in 1849, walked from there to El Paso. Oh, yeah. They were infantry. They marched. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what they were doing. I mean, people up and down the Camino Real, they people walked. People said, people have asked me, well, yeah, they rode in wagons or on horses. Well, there was a. No. They didn't. <laughs> they were infantry. They yeah. walked. There was a small unit that was mounted on mules, but for the most part, they walked. Walk and the in. wagons were pulled either by mules or by oxen. I can't even imagine. What those guys eat? I mean, they, they brought food with them in a little package of some kind? Rations at the time included flour. That's just flour, sugar, salt, vinegar. You had to sit there and make that into something? Salt, hard yes. Hardtack. Uh, hardtack, hard yeah. Hardbread, hardtack. Hard bread, hard tack. bread yeah. Um, you had uh, salt pork, bacon. Oh. So you would get a ration of that. You would put that in your um, ration can. And then you would stop and uh, fire up something, and you'd cook your bacon, and maybe you'd mix in a little bit of flour to f form a little bit of slush with the grease, and you would eat that. Oh, am I not hungry now? Yes. <laughs> no. And you would get a ration of coffee. These were usually green coffee beans, the whole bean, oh. that you would have to then roast in your pan, and then you'd stick them in a sock and bang them against a rock to crush it. And then you'd make your coffee mm, out lovely. of your sock. Yes, little, little 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 extra minerals in there, perhaps with some of the rock breaking off. In well, there. you have you Yum. have your, you have your left footed uh, coffee and your right footed coffee. Well, I just yes. want to know: was it a clean or a dirty sock? Depends or did on it the start day. out dirty and end up clean? It was cleaner when you had mm. the coffee you, done. You washed your socks. Yeah, did your you laundry had a place to in coffee? <laughs> wash it yes. in coffee. Well, it's yeah. boiling. So yeah. <laughs> the army life. Oh, I I wouldn't think army life would have been a whole lot of fun back in that day. It was a rough life, a, a terrifically rough life. You you would be recruited uh, pretty much on the e in the east or in the Midwest. You might go to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, or another post there and get a short. Uh, uh, stint of training, how to march, you get your issue of clothing, and then they would put you in a train or in, uh, in, in a formation, and as recruits, they would march you out here. Wow. 
and you would get your training then at the post where you finally landed. And for the most part, these were one or two company posts. So if you were, say, in the 3rd Infantry, uh, 8th Infantry, you might spend your whole enlistment at that post with your company and never see the rest of the regiment. Oh, my Ever. God. So, talk about Fort Quitman for a minute. I mean, that's on your list here. We don't have a lot of pictures, but we have a uh, we have aren't, something here. There aren't a lot of pictures of Fort Quitman. <laughs> but uh, we do have like a map of the area, don't we? Uh, there is a a map, a layout of the post. Andrew, you got Fort Quitman um, somewhere in there? Okay, there it is. So, uh, uh, Quitman is really the known for being at the time the worst post in the entire United States Army. Oh, okay. Now, Quitman was established in 1858, so this is some time before the Civil War, not too long before the Civil War. After Fort Bliss was pretty well established, this is still McGoffinsville time. Uh, Fort Fillmore is is there. Um, but uh, it was named for Major John, uh, Major General John Quitman. He served with General Zachary Taylor in the Mexican-American War. Hmm. He was subsequently elected as governor of Mississippi and an ardent uh, southerner. Zachary Taylor named a lot of uh, forts, didn't he? Fort Bliss, that was uh, his... Well, Zachary Taylor was president of the United States yeah. uh, until he died. He, I mean, just to deviate a little, uh, he spent some time... Hey, he's only been president for several months. He he sat in the broiling sun, listening to a very very long uh, <laughs> speech uh, from a senator, and then he <laughs> tried to cool off by eating uh, cucumbers and washing it down with iced milk, uh, which gave him a bad case of gastroenteritis, oh. which he probably would have recovered from quite nicely. But, of course, he was the president, and uh, they had to— No downtime. Well, they had to loose the doctors on him. Uh, mm-hmm. So they bled him. They they, they, they uh, killed him. They bled him. They fed him calomel. They fed him uh, um, other things. And that essentially he succumbed. Uh, uh, and so that's when Millard Fillmore became the president. Yeah. Um, and then he got the fort. So he got the fort named for him. There yes. Yes. All right, we have a question, a question coming in by phone. Are you ready for that? I am prepared. Hey, John Hamilton, question by phone from Raul. Hey, how's it going, Raul? Good, guys. How about you all? Survive. Fine, fine. We're surviving. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know what happened, what kind of transition took place when uh, Texas uh, joined the Confederacy and, uh, you know, Fort Bliss, I guess, was taken over by the Confederates, I would imagine. Uh, just another another point. I heard on a show the other day, a radio show, uh, that one of the major reasons that Texas broke away uh, from Mexico is because Mexico had uh, uh, outlawed slavery, and there were, you know, slavers here in Texas. So that the slavery issue was a big issue with the Texans, in addition to them wanting to run their own show. So thank you for the show. Thank you. All right. John, any thoughts? Okay. First question was uh, um, Texas. Yes, Texas was. Uh, it was uh, a a province of Mexico. Uh, it was uh, the people that came in from the United States. A lot of them did, did bring in their slaves, uh, particularly in East Texas, where they could raise crops. I mean, uh, that's what slavery did. It uh, it, it worked the farms. Basically yeah. sustained the farms. Yeah. Um, so yes, the uh, uh, the uh, Mexican government outlawed slavery. Uh, that was one of the things that drove the Texans to revolt. Uh, plus, you are correct. The Texans were uh, a feisty bunch. They wanted to run their own show, and uh, they did not like being uh, uh, brought under and brought to heel by the Mexican government. Particularly when Texas was combined with Coahuila, with the state of Coahuila. For a while, it was Texas and Coahuila. So that precipitated the revolt. Um, then in 1860, 1861, Texas was a, essentially, it's, it became a part of the Union in 1845. It was a slave state. Uh, and uh, Texas had a lot of Southern sympathizers. And, of course, the Texas government decided that they wanted to secede, and they passed the Articles of Secession. And then the commander of the Department of Texas, General David Twiggs, 
General Twiggs was uh, commander in the Mexican-American War. General Twiggs said, right, uh, I'm going to turn over everything in Texas that belongs to the Union Army to the Confederacy and uh, walk away. And walk away. So yeah. the troops then, the Union troops, are sitting here saying, uh, what do we do now? Hold uh, that thought. After the break, you'll have to answer the question, sure. what did the troops do? Yeah, let me yes. think. <laughs> Andrew, you ready for another break here? we got to do it right now. Taking a break back in a moment. If you're a local business owner, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Got John Hamilton here talking about forts and the history around El Paso. Need to let you know also about the Centennial Museum. They're celebrating life in the Chihuahuan Desert. Open house coming up, celebrating the arts, the natural history, and the culture on campus, Saturday, June 5. A full day of activities on the campus with their partners. The student exhibition, UTEP's Langhang. Yeah, is that how you say that? Langhang. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's an old church. No, it's not really. It's a it's a Tibetan monastery thing. And a public art there right there in the middle of the, the campus. So check that out. Uh, get a hold of their website. And that's for the Centennial Museum. 
Oh, I, I wanted to share real quick before we go, but I've got one other thing to talk about. But I, this is a note for John from John Berman. Great show. Professor Hamilton is amazing, and it would have made more sense if the plaza had been named Plaza de los Camelos. Camelos. No? <laughs> LOL. So he just uh. thought that was really, but he's really enjoying the show today. Um, and let's see. Oh, can't forget. we got to mention that talking about museums, you got the El Paso International Airport, the City of El Paso Museums and Cultural Affairs Department, and the El Paso Museum of Archaeology, uh, they're having a show with Wayne Suggs. Uh, they just opened the exhibit, and it's ongoing now, I think, through the summer. And it's going to be showcasing his photography. Who's, if you've ever seen his picture, he's a wonderful photographer. And they are also got artifacts from the Ancient Cultural Crossroads Collection. It's located in the El Paso International Airport gallery space just off the main lobby across from the Plaza News and Gift Store. Yeah, get out there and take a look at it. It should be, it should be a very, very good show. Also, Barbara Given Bainey's checking in on our page because yeah. she's uh, very helpful to everything she's we're doing. A, oh, she well, is. John, we've got about two minutes in this hour. We're going to keep you up until noon talking about forts. We're not talking about all the forts. We're talking about some specific forts. And we've covered Fillmore, and I think it's now time show. And we've talked a bit about Lenoria and McGoffinsville and that. Uh, but should we start heading toward uh, Fort Stanton? Well, there, we didn't finish off the question for the last, oh, the Texas. last break. The, what happened to the soldiers? That's right. After, what happened when Texas went the, Confederate? All of the soldiers in Texas that were Union soldiers were directed to move to the coast and take ship, and they would be taken to New York. Oh, you mean to the Gulf Coast? Yes. They would move to the Gulf Coast. Indianola, um, yeah. uh, Corpus Christi. Uh, they would take ship and they would be moved. Um, all of the soldiers here at Fort Bliss, uh, at McGoffinsville, uh, they were 8th Infantry. Also the troops at Fort Quitman and Fort Davis, they assembled to march to the coast and were captured by General Earl Van Dorn of the Confederate Army. And they spent uh, more than a year as prisoners of war before they were paroled. And this is interesting. There were troops at Fort Quitman. Fort Quitman, of course, being down on the Rio Grande, it's about 80 miles south of El Paso. Uh, it uh, was really set up to provide quarters for two companies of troops and 10 officers. Uh, but it was a pretty awful place. Yeah. Uh, the, the river provided their water to them. Um, and at the time, uh, there was only one officer at Fort Quitman. His name was First Lieutenant Zenas Bliss, no relation to William Wallace Smith Bliss. And Bliss commanded the post as the sole officer in 1861, and the, he said the only time he issued orders, the, the only time he talked to another human being was when he issued orders to his troops. Oh, my gosh. So it's this really hugely isolated place. Uh, Bliss was told, uh, pack up your stuff uh, and move to Eagle Springs and then to Fort Davis. So he packed up. He moved to Eagle Springs where there was a camp and received a message, received a message that said, uh, you need to turn over all of your stuff to the Confederate Commissioner, Commissioner James McGoffin and wait at the post until uh, 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 Major Reeve and the rest of the 8th Infantry arrive from Fort Bliss. Well, now here he sits at, at Fort at Eagle Springs realizing, hmm, there's $40,000 worth of stuff there and there's nobody there guarding it. <laughs> so he raced back and got there and was relieved to find that the post was intact and he was able to turn it, it was over. Okay. And oh, then that moved. was good. John <laughs> Hamilton. We're going to pick up a more discussion about the forts around El Paso after the news. Thank you all for joining us. See you then. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. 
This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. 
Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming. Here we be starting Hour 2 of the El Paso History Show with an El Paso History Moment produced by Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. And our topic today is about official U.S. Army scouts who are actually Apache Indians. One of the last battles for Apaches. Following the surrender of Geronimo, the military's need for Indian scouts diminished until Pancho Villa's raid on Columbus, New Mexico in 1916. Arriving in El Paso by train from Georgia, Major Robert L. Howes and the 11th Cavalry Regiment were assigned a detachment of 20 Apache scouts to help search for Pancho Villa. The Apache scouts were not trained or drilled to maneuver as the soldiers of the Army. Their operations were in accordance with the Apache's natural habits of scouting and fighting. Leaving El Paso and marching south, the cavalrymen approached Ojos Azules, Mexico, just after daybreak. But V.E.'s to guards detected the advance of Howe's Apache scouts and alerted the bandit main body. Howe's ordered a mounted charge, killing 61 bandits and dispersing the remainder into the hills with no American casualties. When the engagement ended, First Sergeant Chicken of the Apache Scouts exclaimed, Hooli, damn good fight! In 1947, Apache Scouts were officially deactivated from the U.S. Army. More history next week on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. What did that Indian say? Ah, uh, it's a damn good fight. Damn good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Captain <laughs> Captain Chicken. But you know, somebody asked Chicken. Asking, yeah, yes. Captain Chicken. Well, there's some interesting names these gentlemen had. Uh, but uh, one thing that was really interesting was somebody said, well, no, the Apaches wouldn't have gone against the Mexicans. I said, oh, yes, they would. Well, and yeah, they were asking me why. I said, because until 1920s or 1930s, I can't remember exactly, there was still a bounty out for Apache scalps in Mexico. So, obviously, there was no love loss. No, no, no big deal there. <laughs> well, you do this for the History Alliance, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, they've got a Facebook page with more than 62,000 followers. And they have great historic pictures, historical information, historic preservation information. And the page is ministered by Max Grossman and Matt Mar- uh, excuse me, Mark Stone. And then we have the premier Facebook page, Remember in El Paso Win, managed by Barbara Given Bainey. And this is a great Facebook page and is home to an amazing amount of historic pictures, stories, and so much more. Good old BGB herself is the chief bottle washer. Ken Sutherland, new guy there. Margaret Smith, Rick Duncan, Paul Louie, Ken Weiss, and Craig Hayes. Thank you guys, y'all, for doing what you do here. John Hamilton, uh, do you have much information on Apache Scouts? I mean, 
they sort of did their own thing. They didn't do training well with the other guys. Yeah, they were organized as uh, as scouts. Uh, they were uh, not exactly uh, not exactly uh, able to drill as soldiers, but they did. Uh, they had their own uniforms, their own. Uh, the, the Indian scouts for the Army had, yeah. had their own uniforms, uh, their own insignia. In fact, uh, Special Forces today wears the crossed uh, arrows, which was the insignia for, for the Indian scouts. So that still exists in the Army today, that, that insignia, that, that heritage. That was a big uh, deal back then, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they were very effective. It's, uh, it, and, in fact, Geronimo, Geronimo was actually run to ground by Cherokee scouts from his own tribe, who essentially knew where he'd be and knew what he'd be doing. Uh, and the tragedy was that uh, General Nelson Miles, uh, once he had captured Geronimo and his band uh, and was ready to put him on trains for Florida, he turned to his Apache scouts who'd helped capture him and said, okay, you guys, drop your weapons, you get on the train too. Oh, come yeah. on. Oh, no, yeah. There, After there all was, of that. Yep. There was a lot of that with a lot of the, the, the Kiowas had some same issues along yep. the same way and, and yeah. some of the others. It's really, really a shame. Yeah. It's pretty didn't, ugly. Didn't keep a lot of word back then. No. Mm, no. Nope. Yeah, got to wonder well, why. I don't know that Miles ever even gave his word well, to, not to do that. Well, just, and yet it's interesting because the, the Native Americans are very strong in our military to this day. Oh, very and much. have fought valiantly for this country in spite of things that have happened in the past. Well, the Code Talkers in World War II. Code I mean, Talkers, that, best, best story known. That was a known, huge you know. event yep. in the Japanese theater. Yeah, and yes. then also the, the scouts, too. A lot of the, the Native scouts, they carried some of those traditions to the military that you didn't look at them as being like they did in the Old West, but they used those scouting uh, abilities when they were fighting the wars. Yep. All right, you want to move on to another fort now? Are you ready for another fort? I want to fort? talk about Fort Stanton. Did you want to talk about, want to go to, to Fort Stanton well, up we had in the a, hills? An off, uh, off-air question about Fort Selden. Are we going to get to any of that? We're not going to get to Selden today, but Selden is interesting, too. Uh, you want to just brush on that a among bit? Among other things, Selden was the home of a young seven-year-old by the name of Douglas MacArthur. Ah. Who said in his memoirs that that's where he learned to ride and shoot. And uh, didn't really learn to read and write before he rode and, and shot. That's just north of Las uh, Cruces. It's at Radium Springs, uh, Major That's Post. And it's interesting, too, because it was, of course, there to protect uh, locals from the Indians. But uh, for a while, when they were considering closing the Fort Bliss at Hart's Mill and then moving the post, uh, one of the posts in the running for moving that post was Fort Selden. That's actually where the uh, the Camino Real takes off from the river. Yes, and goes up into the Hornada del, del Muerto. So once you yes. come, you're coming down south. You yes. you you hit Fort Selden basically. Right. That's where the river is, and you yes. just take that all the way down to El Paso. There are some ruins that are still there. There is a small museum there. It's worth a visit. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. It's really interesting it's neat. place. Um, um, all right. Keep keep glancing off and go to. But uh, we'll we'll Stanton. talk about Fort Stanton up in the hills. Uh, it was established in 1855. We have a map of that, I believe, on the Rio Bonito, which was a mountain stream. Uh, it was named for a Captain Henry Stanton, who was with the First Dragoons. He was a West Point graduate. He was killed in a, in a skirmish with Mescalero, Mescalero Apaches. Uh, in February of 1855. Is this up near the airport, uh, Rod- Rodoso Airport somewhere? Over uh, sh- I've been up there. It's it's pretty close. It's not very far. Uh, uh, the original post was pretty small. It was two adobe block houses. It had a, an adobe wall around it. And it was uh, notable because it was so isolated up there in the hills. Um, it was really established to control and oversee the uh, Mexican Ale- uh, Mescalero Apache tribe and was the Indian agency headquarters for that until 1861. 1861, Civil War. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was the post that Major Lind and his gang from Fort Fillmore was trying to get to in 1861. And uh, the Mescaleros uh, were always a problem, but um, Fort Stanton was abandoned. The Confederates were there for a short while, but they, they abandoned the post. Uh, particularly when uh, the Sibley expedition came through and they moved up into New Mexico. Can you find any um, reason why the Mescaleros were allowed to keep their mountain and turn it into a ski run and into a big resort? Because well, most, like most Indians, like the ones you mentioned earlier, 
get on the train now that you've captured people for us. Drop your weapons. How come they didn't do that to the Mescaleros? Well, that's sort of interesting because the Mescaleros, along with the Navajos, were rounded up by uh, by Colonel Kit Carson, Christopher Carson, in uh, the in 1862-1863, and they were all moved to the Bosque Redondo, um, which is at, where, which is over on the Pecos River, uh, and it was um, who was it? It was uh, James Henry Carleton, the commanding general of the Union Volunteers from the California Column, who essentially put them there to uh, basically make them into farmers in, uh, and uh, and change their lives and, and integrate them more into the Mescaleros. They, yes. They moved them, they moved them off of their rest, current— First of all, the Mescaleros and the Navajos were, did not like each other <laughs> ah. at all. <laughs> And, I think Navajos uh, didn't get along with a lot of people. And then one one bright morning, uh, it, it emerged that the Mescaleros had simply pulled up sticks and gone back up into the mountains. Oh, Oops, we're um, gone. <laughs> so uh, the Mescaleros <laughs> went back in. They established their reservation there. And it, yeah, sure. Later on, uh, they were they, they they had the casino, the, the resort, all Love. this stuff. More power to them, but. Uh, um, no, I mean, yeah, but back in the um, day when, when the white men were kicking the Indians off of the property, how did they get – you said they just snuck back in and stayed there. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Oh. I think it would yeah. have been a lot of hassle and, trying and to remember, get them out of there, yeah. Yeah, during the Civil War, there were other things that were sort of drawing attention elsewhere, so they really didn't make an effort to <laughs> to to run them off of there. The Mescaleros uh, were part of the problem – uh, they joined forces with a an Indian chief of the Mimbres Apaches called Victorio in oh, 1879, yeah. ah, 1880. Yes. And uh, during the Victorio War, uh, Fort Stanton played a part. There were um, four companies of the 9th Cavalry there under uh, uh, Captain Henry, Carl, uh, Henry Carroll. Um, the... Uh, of course, Victoria went on the warpath because he would not move to the San Carlos Re- Reservation out in Arizona, which is an awful place, just terrible. Uh, and if you've ever been up to the area where uh, um, where Victoria and, and Ojo, at Ojo Caliente, where he and his tribe lived, that's a pretty nice place. You know, yes. Warm Springs. Uh, yeah, Warm yeah. Springs. Oh, Apache. my Black God. River, yeah. Black River up there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Victoria essentially just went out and, and started raiding uh, settlements and farms and ranches and, uh, and uh, just went on the warpath. There, really yeah. there, so, there really is a warm spring up there, by the way. Yes. Have you seen it? Uh, I have seen it, yes. I, I, I've been up it. But it's been years since I've been but there. But it just a big hole in the ground, all of a sudden this hot water comes out. Yeah. Oh, and it flows down a canyon and turns into neat stuff. Yes. So um, at one point... Uh, uh, Victorio and his band were determined to be at Hembrio Canyon, which is on White Sands, as you probably know. Victorio's Peak is there. That's right. And uh, uh, the commander in uh, of the 9th Cavalry, uh, uh, Colonel Edward Hatch, essentially assembled all of the 9th Cavalry troops he could and decided to converge on Hembrio Canyon and catch them. Uh, well, uh, Henry Carroll's troops left Stanton, crossed uh, the White Sands, uh, and arrived at uh, uh, the canyon before any, uh, any of the other troops coming from the west did. Uh, he attempted to attack and subdue Victorio and himself was essentially surrounded by an inferior force right. with repeating rifles, though. They did have some And they repeaters. had the high ground. The Indians had the high ground. And the Indians had the high ground. So Carroll gets wounded. A lot of his troopers get wounded. They can't get to water until the rest of the troopers show up, uh, the 9th Cavalry, some of the 6th Cavalry from the Arizona, and uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, White Mountain Apache scouts, I think, were with them. Uh, and Victorio eludes them and moves south and crosses the border into Mexico. And he had women and children with him. Yeah. And the whole, yeah. whole, every, the whole every, tribe everybody. Yeah. These well, were they had to. hard people. Oh, my God, yeah. yes. Yes. And, yes. and so Victoria's Peak has a story for another day, but that yes. turned out to be a supposed treasure location. Oh, my. Yes, we, whether, could, we could go down that road. And whether the Indians had road. knew about the treasure <laughs> or not, who, who knows. But uh, no, no, keep going to uh, we got to go to Fort, but I Fort could say, Stanton. I, yeah, let's say some more about Fort Stanton. The year before at Fort Stanton, uh, we know now you've heard of the Lincoln County War. 
Uh, Lincoln County War was, was uh, a dispute between two factions who essentially wanted to run the economy, run cattle, uh, own the land, uh, supply cattle to the army. Uh, so you had the Murphy Dolan faction or gang, as they were called in 1878. And you had the Tunstall McSween faction, uh, which were sort of the newcomers in 1878. And uh, this is when they brought in gunfighters, uh, one of whom was named Henry Antrim, alias William Bonney, alias Billy the Kid. BTK. And um, uh, things really came to a head in 1878 when they were essentially pretty much going to fight in the streets of the town of Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, the commander at Fort Stanton then was a gentleman by the name of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nathan August Monroe Dudley. Oh. Now, Colonel Dudley had been a Civil War vet, was a Civil War vet, and he had people that he had fought with. His career in the Civil War was relatively undistinguished, uh, but he was a bit of a martinet. Uh, when you see a picture of him, you realize, okay, yeah, the lights are on, but maybe nobody's home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was, he was very self-assured. He was a drinker, and he'd been <laughs> in trouble before for the Army, and he'd always managed to get out from under it because he had powerful friends in Washington in the Congress who fought with him in the Civil War and were his drinking buddies, essentially. They took care of him. Oh, yeah. So in 1878, the Congress passed something called the Posse Comitatus Act, which essentially specifically said the Army could not intervene in a civil dispute or a civil uh, law enforcement issue unless the president said okay and declared martial law. Yeah. Uh, so the Army issued a general order that, that prohibited this, and the local sheriff of uh, Lincoln County went to Colonel Dudley and said, I really need some troops. We need to run these people out of town in Lincoln. And Colonel Dudley went to Colonel Hatch, his commander in Santa Fe, and said, I want to do this. You know, I owe it to these people. They're my friends. And Colonel Hatch said, no, 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 you can't do this. Whereupon Colonel Dudley said to himself, I'm just going to do it. So he dressed up his troops in the finest uniforms. He brought in a Gatling gun with oh. several thousand rounds of ammunition and a 12-pounder mountain howitzer oh and my. went into the town. And let's talk <laughs> positioned around the town, aimed the gun at different places, um, managed to get the justice of the peace, uh, kind of uh, bulldozed him into issuing warrants for the arrest of Tunstall and McSween and the kid. And and ultimately, in this fracas, the, the house in the, the store of, uh, of uh, uh, McSween was set afire. And when he tried to escape, he was shot down in the street and was late and was dead. And th that sort of brought some real uh, opprobrium against the Army, who was involved in this mess. And was told not to. And was told not to. So, and then did their own thing. So yeah. Colonel Dudley had a, got a court of inquiry from the Army, and he had to, uh, he was tried in Mazia. Uh, uh, for intervening in this. He was acquitted in Mazia. He got out from under his court of inquiry. But the, the, uh, the territorial governor, a gentleman by the name of Lou Wallace, oh, yes. oh, yeah. uh, ben -Hur. said, uh, don't think you want to keep him there in command at Fort Stanton, so move him. <laughs> so the Army moved him to command Fort Cummings, which uh, is out near Deming. That's not the, <laughs> that's not the end of the story. Is that the end of the story? That's pretty much the end of ah, that okay. story. In that case, we got to take a break. We'll take a break. I was waiting to get to the end of the story here. <laughs> I think we ended up at Deming, that Fort and Deming. Uh, that was pretty much the middle of the There's a lot going on around in the Old West yes, days. That was, uh, yeah, it was not the end of the world, but you could see it from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's next door. All right, taking a break here, coming back in a minute, talking more about the Fort history around the El Paso area, a lot of it there. And you got some more Facebook things to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions for the doctor afterwards. The doctor, we promoted him. We're Dr. Dr. Hamilton. Doctor of Military Science. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on the radio. I know. On the radio, you, you did. stated the holiday end. With all that going on, let's be back in a moment. Andrew, yeah. hit the button. Monterey Asset. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. 
and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here. Got to let you know who's coming here next week. We got Bernie Sargent back. Uh, we we started something in early April where we had a, all this ambitious plan to <laughs> talk about all these things we had lined up. It's going to be another 100 years. Well, we got to about half of them. So we're going to go start that up again. We're gonna we, Next week, we're going to start with the Civil War history in El Paso and move forward from there, see what happens. June the 12th, have you been to War Eagles Air Museum lately? We're going to hear about the museum's history and how it started out as a collection of vintage airplanes in a private private collection. Uh, and, uh, Mike uh, Eck will be part of our uh, be our guest. He's the new executive director. Uh, Harry Herbert von Filich himself, June 19th, will be here. He's going to talk about spy stories from the Mexican Revolution. He found a bunch of National Archive documents showing the money trail from Germany to Pancho Villa and other Mexican revolutionaries. An actual money trail, John. What do you think of that? Wow. It, it found, they found it, and uh, it was in it was in a briefcase that just got stuck, stuck away in the National Archives. So this guy goes in and finds it, digs through it, and finds the checks where they're paying a, a guy to pay Pancho Villa to do German bidding. Oh, uh, hmm. wow. Anyway, that's coming up Fancy there. see that. And Florian Weidel will be there with him. Another military historian. June the 26th, what's going on in space these days? Our guest will be Chris Orwall. He's director of New Mexico Museum of Space History. Talk about his museum and also 
what all the things going on in the space world here. So what do you got? You got lots something. of stuff going on out there. Okay, well, speaking of, you know, we're talking about Fort Bliss in, in a sense. Uh, the Frontier Land Alliance and the Franklin Mountains Wilderness Coalition and the El Paso Community Foundation are working to get the picturesque 7,080 acre Kastner Range dedicated as a national monument. But they need your help and they'd like you to visit kastnerforever.org and sign a letter of support. And uh, do consider to, to donate to the fund for Kastner Range. Kastner Range, it's been there forever. Let's keep it there forever. So been there since know. 1926. Yep. 26. And, and went I thought the, it was earlier than that. So it went well, through the so 40s. Uh, there wasn't much flying then. General yeah. Joseph Kastner was the commander of Fort Bliss in 1926. Oh, so there's actually one that somebody who, was, who actually was here yes. who was named uh, after. He was, uh, he was commander of the 1st Cavalry Division. Uh, he needed the space for um, really no kid, a really no kidding range. Yeah. So they managed to acquire that land uh, from its owners and uh, constructed ranges there, and they've shot everything oh. out there. There's and to be sure, uh, is there still some unexploded ordnance out there? Yep. I can imagine in the you, side of the mountains. Yes, yes, yeah. there would be. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, they're going to have an issue there putting that into uh, the park system. But we'll see how that turns out. Just Got watch a, where you step. Oh, <laughs> oh, and don't even think about it. Got a <laughs> caller. Fingers uh, in your ears. Got a caller here for you, John Hamilton. Got a yes, caller sir. named uh, Alan. Alan, you got some questions for John? Go ahead. Yes, sir. The first question is, when did the cavalry change over from uh, battalions and companies to squadrons and troops? And the second question is, in the, is the museum open, the Army, you know, one of the Post Museum and Times? And the other is a statement about Kit Carson. The first battle of uh, Doby Walls, I think it was in 1862, something like that. He had two 12-pound mountain howitzers saved his butt from the Comanches, and the Comanches called it the gun that shoots twice because the gun would go off, then the, either the spherical case shot or the shrapnel shell would go off. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yep. So when, when did they change over the squad? Oh, that's a very good question. In the 1870s, you start reading the interchangeable names. Uh, they, they refer to squadrons and troops, and they refer to companies and battalions. And really what I've seen is about 1884, 1885 is when they really make the change. And they refer strictly to uh, cavalry units as troops and squadrons. Uh, other and qu- from then on. Alan, your other question? Uh, the other, uh, let's see. The other question was the... Uh, Times that the uh, uh, museum on pay- post is it oh, open? Good it's going to question. be open. What's the deal with that? It is open. Uh, they are open Wednesday through Saturday, uh, from I think nine until four thirty. Um, and uh, getting on post can be a challenge if, if you've got a, some kind of an ID card, then you can get in. Oh, um, I'm a retired military, sir. Yeah, well, then you're straight. Um, but yes, it is open. They are getting ready. They have just replaced the roof. They are getting ready to redo the exhibits, and that will happen probably starting next year. Great. Uh, they okay, got the money for quick, it. One uh, quick question on the exhibits. Sure. Are you going to increase the amount of small arms you display? Yes. Yes. When I was the director there, I put in a request for uh, uh, the arms that were essentially ours, and uh, it was approved, but they've held off uh, shipping the arms uh, they're going to be getting those weapons pretty soon now, I think. Uh, maybe is they may have gotten them last week. They just got a Bradley fighting vehicle from Yuma, uh, which okay. is in great shape. Um, and so, yes, the small arms that were ours that were shipped to Anniston, Alabama, are coming back. A lot of them. Not all of them. I mean, f- okay. we I had— know that's a depository. It used to be Pueblo Depot, but that's a depository for historical stuff for the Army. I know that. Uh, yes, there, there is a historical uh, storage area there. Yes, yes, sir. Alan, okay. thanks for calling. Thanks, All Alan. Right. Have a good day. Thank hey, you, you, gentlemen. You take Bye-bye. her easy. And I think you answered this question, came in by phone just in the middle of that. Who was Kasner named for? And you said it was a commander in 1926. Brigadier General Joseph Kasner. He was the commander of the 1st Cavalry Division in 1926. They needed the range space, and uh, that, post, that, that range was named for him. There he is, Kasner Range. All right. Taking a break here, coming back and doing a lot more history. We haven't gotten to one fort here yet, maybe two. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have we some questions from the, from the Facebook pages here, too. We we'll, have to follow up we'll on. We'll get to those. Okay, we'll get to those. Coming back in a minute, call us if you need to. The number would be? 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Here's the deal. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show. 
which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here. Are you ready for this week only in El Paso, Inc.? Yes, no, I you're am. not. Yes, oh, you, I am. Oh, you are? Okay. Aha, fooled you. Ah. Why business leaders in El Paso and across Texas are stepping up their push to protect dreamers. Also in the Inc., the Medical Center of the Americas is readying plans for the next step in its expansion in South Central El Paso. The CEO of one of El Paso's largest hospitals looks back on her two decades in the Sun City as she trades El Paso's prickly pears for Tucson Sawatos. And El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. Sunday night at 10.35 p.m., Josau Signs talks about the Texas legislative session as it winds down. What, what important legislation was passed by our state lawmakers and laws that will affect all Texans for years to come. Once signed into law by Governor Greg Abbott, new laws from abortion, elections, guns, police reform, they'll all become laws in Texas. One of the most controversial was legislation aimed at gun ownership. 
Saul's guests are joining the discussion from Austin. They are State Senators Cesar Blanco and Representative Mary Gonzalez. This Sunday night at 10.35 p.m., join host Saul Signs on ABC7 Extra. A lot going on there. Oh, that's craziness. Yeah. Ah, John <laughs> Hamilton, you got a lot to talk about here in the way of military. And you had some questions, Melissa, that came up on yes, the... Yes, uh, just come up. Yes. Uh, first of all, we want to point out that, <laughs> that John is not a doctor or a professor, but we will... We'll call him anything. But, but <laughs> he's easy. Because uh, we've had a lot of people. Some things you can't print. But they, but, uh, they, yeah, they were really enjoying the show. But I did have, there was a question on Old Fort Quitman's Cemetery. And do you know anything about that? And then also Fort Bayard. I think I pretty much got that answered as long as another one was about the old Fort Bliss buildings down here on Paisano, which are in sale right now. So I haven't been there for years. Yeah. Uh, when I was there, we found the cemetery. You can't find the post. Uh, it's pretty much melted into It's the adobe terrain. dissolved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's gone. But the cemetery was used uh, was used for a number of years after uh, the post uh, pretty much closed up. So locals. And the locals bury people there. So, yes, it's well, there. How, f- yeah. how far is it from where the original post might have been? It's not far. It's, it's, pro- it's less than a mile. Uh, it's up the hill from the post, as I recall. And it's near to the highway. Well, the right highway the road yeah. that's there the road yeah yes you got you, you, any more uh let's see uh answered another question no just everybody really in, enjoys your information one we had one person asked about following you on social media but you don't have a facebook page so he's smarter than that he's not socialized not though. yet <laughs> we do have a caller coming in here however his name is ralph ralph we got you on the radio what's up what's up ralph uh, hi how you guys doing great uh Fine. great history show i really appreciate this show thanks thank you thank you Listen, I, we were we were talking about military uh, and military equipment, and I, uh, you know, when uh, we go up to Cattlemen's to have ourselves a little steak there, there's some cannons that are sitting inside like a little mini museum there. Can you uh, can you elaborate on those cannons? Do you I know anything about them? Don't know. I yeah. I, I, I saw them. Talking about yeah. I've seen yeah. them, and they're in incredibly good condition. It's like they were never yeah. used. I don't know what those are. Uh, Whether they're replicas or uh, what. Uh, they have all kinds of... Uh, I'll look it up. Ralph, desc- de- describe what you saw there, Ralph. Are these... Well, there's, uh, it's, a, it's a glass uh, type of chamber. Right. And then inside the, the chamber, there are two uh, uh, cannons that, you know, of course, they were pulled by, you know, by horses, uh, large wheels on them, spoke wheels. Uh, and, uh, and you can actually see the... Uh, uh, the cannon or the bu- or the bullets that go into the into that uh, in, into that machine, and I was I was just wondering if you knew anything about that. You know, I wonder if any of those were perhaps props left by movies that were made that out in that area. Been. Just happened to yeah. think about that. You know, they that. got they got all kinds of military equipment strewn across the desert out there from various movies that they made. There's a helicopter pops up out of nowhere somewhere. But this stuff, no, this stuff is this stuff's in pretty good shape. I remember seeing it. Yeah. So I don't know if somebody oh, knows that. Give us a call five four four five eight seven six. What are those items? Well, Ralph, you start us up on that. We'll see what happens. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Have a good one. Same to you. You take, take care. Easy. Thank see you, Ralph. You never can't tell what's going on. I mean, see, there should be a military museum in the El Paso area. Yeah. Oh, you well, think? there is on Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss. And, um, but I mean, th- it, shouldn't there be a civilian military museum? I would say it would be good if we could figure out how we could get the museum on Fort Bliss open so that you don't have to come on the post. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, It's a challenge, Ah. uh, the way Mm -hmm. it's set up. Uh, The National Museum of the United States Army on Fort Belvoir, uh, you don't have to come on Fort Fort Belvoir, Virginia, to visit that that museum. Well, it's like so. you were talking about the cannons there. you got the cannon at East Lake. That's the Blue yeah. Whistler, yeah. which, yeah. which yeah. traded Bernie's hands favorite. both yeah. Yeah, Union and Kathy. Yeah, Bernie wrote Bernie the book on that it. Bernie loves that one. And, yes. you know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> His story is amazing, too, how far back it goes. All right, Fort Davis. Here we go. Fort Davis, established 1854. They moved troops up from Down River, uh, a place called Fort Ringgold. Uh, it was troops of the 8th Infantry Regiment that came in. Uh, this was part of a line of forts, including Camp Hudson on the Devil's River region, Fort Lancaster in Crockett County, Fort Stockton, Fort Quitman, and, of course, Fort Bliss. Um, the road to the post uh, from uh, the east was surveyed by Lieutenant Colonel Joseph E. Johnston. You probably recognize the name. He was a Confederate officer and a full general in the Civil War. Oh. In fact, just as an aside— Many officers that were in Texas and New Mexico 
resigned their commissions, came through Fort Bliss, Fort Davis, and uh, joined the Confederacy and be, ended up as uh, general officers. Ah, in the going Civil that War. direction. You know, that, that happened. And uh, Lydia Lane Spencer, who wrote uh, I Married a Soldier, was, she, she was just absolutely um, um, insulted that these men would do this. These were her friends. Oh, my. And they were traitors to do this. <laughs> um, but anyway, getting back to Fort Davis, it was built on a site that was an, originally called Painted Comanche Camp. It was a si- uh, astride no- known Indian trails. Uh, the Mescalero Trail, the Great Comanche War Trail. Uh, the intent was to establish this, this post to um, protect people that were going to the gold fields. Uh, so it was on the route. On yes, the way. right on the route. All right, let me, let me a, put you go, go ahead. Put you on hold for a minute because yep. we have a caller who wants to talk about cannons. Cannons. Albert, what's up with the cannons? Hey, Jackson, Albert. Yes, sir. Hey, Albert. Those cannons at, uh, at the Cattlemen's, they're from World War One. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I just looked that up. It's the third garrison model, 1902. It was built Rock Island Arsenal, built in 1909. They're in pretty good shape out there. Yeah. They, those weren't used very much, were they? Albert? Sorry? You couldn't. They, 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 did, they looked like they were brand new to me. Well, they might, but I read the sign there, and it says World War One. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for yeah. clarifying that. Yeah, Appreciate I'm looking, it. I'm looking at the pictures yeah. right now. You take her easy. Thanks a lot. Ah. Bye. Well, you ask a question, you get an answer. Yeah. And and Albert's one of those gang of uh, shady people, isn't he? Six guns of shady ladies. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of those. Well, he's a historian. Right. He's, a, he's a U.S. history professor at uh, the community college. Yes. Back to Fort Davis. We stopped so, in stride, something. A stride. Uh, there was uh, The stage lines came through there. Uh, really nice place. The original post was built back up into the canyon. Uh, that post was abandoned in 1861 when uh, it was turned over the, the, to the Confederacy. And the uh, Confederacy stayed there, but they didn't have that many troops there. Um, uh, mounted troops moved through there. The Sibley Expedition came through there in 1861, uh, 1862. Um, uh, when the Confederates abandoned the post in 1862, when they were through back to San Antonio after the failed Sibley Expedition, the Indians came in and wrecked the place. Oh. Pretty much. Um, and it wasn't really until 1867 when federal troops under Lieutenant Colonel Wesley Merritt uh, returned to the fort that was in ruins, and Merritt essentially rebuilt the fort pretty much out on the plain. Well, it's pretty good now, isn't it? I mean, it's a Texas State Park. This was a, well, it's a National Historic Site, too. Yeah. This is a big place. This was set up to uh, to house over 1,000 troops. Wow. Uh, uh, they wanted infantry and cavalry there, and there was there. Um this was the time when Fort Bliss was still a pretty small post. Uh, it uh, still at McGoffinsville until 1868, and then Camp Concordia. So oh, right, it was right. a bigger post, and uh, uh, it was right in the heart of an area where the Indians moved around. Um, it played a big part in uh, the Victoria War. Uh, uh, Colonel Grierson, uh, Benjamin Grierson, commanded the 10th Cavalry. Instead of pursuing the Indians, he put penny packets of soldiers around the area on all the watering holes. <laughs> and by doing that, when Victorio crossed in the Rio Grande and came back in from Mexico, uh, he was able to confront him at several places. And he, they fought him, at, uh, fought him off at Tinaja de las Palmas, uh, which is south of Sierra Blanca. And they essentially fought him off at Rattlesnake Springs and the Sierra Diablo and ran him back into Mexico where he was pretty much wiped out by the Mexican authorities. He, yeah. had, a, he had a tough deal. No, it you was know, a tough w- deal. Would you think there should be a movie made about a guy like him? I think a movie would be oh, very yeah. interesting. Yes. And he, he's and it the, would he, be a very timely movie, too. Now, Victorio had a sister <clears throat> who was a warrior. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, she did, was taking she was, prisoners. <laughs> she was hard as woodpecker lips. I think she was she harder was, than he uh, was. Yes. Hard as what? Woodpecker lips. <laughs> I thought that's what you might have said. I was hoping I that's what you. That I was hoping you might have said that. I had that. woodpeckers yes. at my house. But yes. the yes. thing is, she was a tough chica, and she was in the battles with him. Yes, she oh fought right God. alongside him, and was was she a was warrior. Feared, and yeah. there have been yes. movies or TV shows done about her. Yes. Well, they've I, done about Victoria also. Oh, I've yeah, but, stuff, but I mean, like 
the movie. I mean, come on. Do the real, yeah, the real concise on uh, the big yeah, deal yeah, movie. Yeah, you unfortunately, it would be inflicted with Hollywood. So, uh, oh, but, it'd be uh, infected. it would be infected. Yeah, but, but there are some good movies that have been made about the Indian Wars oh, God, uh, yeah. re- pretty recently. Yeah. So. Ken Burns style uh, yes. uh, movies are um, great. Those are wonderful. We're going to ask Maria to hold. We've got to call her on hold. We've got to take one more break, right, Andrew? One more break here and come back in a minute. We'll talk to Maria about something she wants to talk about for equipment. All right, back in just a moment. Many retired El Paso... You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket. Just to let you know, they do have another story out on Channel 9, the Borderland Treasures, exploring El Paso's architecture. Uh, they've got them on video now, and the topic on the most recent is Mabel Welch, the first licensed woman architect in El Paso and only the second in Texas. So you want to see that segment, ktsm.com. Go there. What do you got, Melissa? I have nothing. 
right. Why don't we just go back to well, John? We only on. have a few minutes left. Well, no, we got callers here. We're going to need to talk to Maria. Maria, we got to talk to you. Maria, you live in the cemetery? No, not in the cemetery, but about <laughs> half a mile from it. Oh, very good. <laughs> Are you talking about Fort Quitman? <laughs> yet, anyway. Fort Quitman Cemetery. Yes, yes, on FM 192. Well, you're out in the middle of nowhere, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> well, tell us about that. Um, we go there once in a while just to visit and look and just, uh, uh, inspect it, I guess. Uh, nobody maintains it. Um, there's grave sites there from the 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s, I think. The most recent one is about the 70s or 80s. But people still go visit their ancestors there. And you don't have, you don't have any Indian raids, do you? No. Okay, so the soldiers <laughs> not being is okay with you. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, thank you for the call. Appreciate it. You're welcome. We have a we found a book. We bought a house right there, and we found a book with a lot of history. So I don't know um, if somebody would be interested in in looking at it. I'd um, be glad to share it with somebody. Absolutely. Let me Talks put you on. Victoria. Let's put it's you on a historical society. We'll put you on hold, and we'll get your phone number and see what we can do about your book. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you for thank calling. You for hold. Calling. Don't thank don't you. don't hang, don't hang up. Hold on. Thanks for listening. Hold on. And another announcement coming from Patricia. Hey, Patricia. Hey there, everyone. Um, I just wanted to invite the public to come look at Concordia Cemetery this weekend. And uh, the flags are up at all the individual veterans' graves. And uh, we uh, have our canopy up for our event on Monday. So we're really excited to be able to honor our veterans who are buried in Concordia. And it's... Uh, it's just a really great feeling to see all that. Thank you for being so concerned and taking care of our history. You're a good caretaker. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I would also love to peek into that book because I'm very interested in the, I've been to the Fort Quitman Cemetery, and I'm also interested in trying to get a historical marker for Fort Hancock and Old Camp Rice. All right. Yeah. Uh, Andrew's, uh, Andrew's just taking the lady's phone number. We'll see what we can do about it. Excellent. And I won't be at lunch, but uh, see you next week, okay? Fair okay, enough. see you next week. Okay, we're going to go to Thanks. lunch without you. We're going to eat your food. <laughs> and you're going to talk about me, I we know. We will. Of course we will. <laughs> okay. Patricia, see thanks a then. lot. You take care. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, that book should be interesting. Andrew, Andrew you got the uh, contact info? John, uh, John Hamilton, we're about out of time here. We usually do this. We run out of time. Because there's so much to talk about when it comes to military history. Um, I was about every what four or five months now. We've asked you to come back, come back again, and, and bring some more stuff. Sure. But the the stuff about the, uh, the where were we? We just at Fort Davis. Fort Davis is a fabulous place. Oh yes, and it's open as a state park. Yes. They recently reopened the hospital. Uh, oh, for, did they? Yes. So it's supposedly restored to some degree, and uh, it was kind of interesting. We. Just as an aside, we, we took a trip. Some of the pictures show a trip that I took with some of the air defenders down there. We took our, uh, they took their physician's assistant with them, and he gave a little briefing on medicine in the 1800s. Oh. And he said, I want to show you one of the tools that they used. And he had his little backpack, and he pulled out a saw. Mm. Ah, yes, a saw for the surgeon. Yes. Multi-purpose yes, tool. Indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. A lot to do yeah, there. If, if anybody has a chance to go down, that is an amazing. I'm, I'm going to be yes. there in July, and it is an amazing display down there. It's, it yes. gives you a real feeling of what it was like to live in the West back then. Interesting yes. stuff. John Hamilton, thanks again for coming in and talking it is about a pleasure. The, the history of El Paso, including the forts as they are. And we will get to There's a lot more forts to talk about. Oh, yes. And we didn't really do Lenoria Mesa, that fort. But that's the fort known as Bliss. That's right. We know all about that. <laughs> yes. And I, I always talk, I always smile at John when I say that because his email has got the word Lenoria Mesa in it. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So there. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you, can they can they email you? Well, yeah, I guess they can. Um, I mean, you do have a book. You're an I've author. I've got, got a book and it's an author, yes. Um, so, yes, if somebody wants to get a hold of me um, – um, I hesitate to give out my email because I, I don't. Hey, call us and we'll find them for yes. you. Could they reach you through the museum? Yes. Okay, I'll put could. the m- museum number up. Sure enough. Yeah. John, thanks again for being here. My Melissa, pleasure. next week we'll do this again. Yes, we will. Andrew J. Polk, see you Monday through Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. Talk El Paso. Everybody else, see you next week right here on the El Paso History Radio Show. Bye. Thanks. Adios. Bye.
You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the...